The Baltic state of Latvia has been one of the biggest and most outspoken supporters of Ukraine in its conflict with Russia. It supplied weapons and is looking after 40,000 refugees. Now the former Soviet Republic is leading calls for an EU-wide ban on tourist visas for Russian citizens. I'm Andrew Hopkins and I've been speaking to the Latvian Foreign Minister, Edgar Srinkovic, one-on-one. Foreign Minister, thank you for talking to TRT World. First of all, I want to ask you about the war in Ukraine because it's been going on now for nearly six months. There doesn't seem to be any sign of Russia giving in. There doesn't seem to be any sign of weapons stopping going to Ukraine. So how do you think it can be brought to a, a, a peaceful solution and quickly? Well, the obvious answer is actually the peace can be achieved only when Ukraine wins. I think that we are reaching the point where we all understand that all the past agreements, be it Minsk agreements back in 2015, the Budapest Memorandum on territorial integrity of, of Ukraine, they have been broken by Russia. So uh, at this point, I do believe that the only way how peace can be established if Ukraine gets its territory back that this is negotiated and that's why uh, we also believe that uh, it may take time. Unfortunately, we see that the uh, number of casualties is increasing, specifically civilian casualties is increasing. But actually, Russia started this war, it can end this war today, but it can end this war only if it leaves also all the occupied territories because those territories do not belong to Russia. But do you think that the, the constant supply of weapons to Ukraine would, in a way, is making Russia more determined to continue with the conflict and therefore the conflict could be longer? Are you expecting a, a long war here? Are you sort of digging in for the long haul, if you like? Well, I think that the fact that we are already talking about the six months of the war that is ranging in Ukraine, that Russia has started, uh, is a testimony that this is a long war. And unfortunately, uh, we do understand that uh, at this point, uh, the only strategy that we get is to do everything possible to end this war only with the victory of Ukraine. To that end, I believe that the strategy of supplying uh, Ukraine with all kind of weapons sanctioning Russia and Belarus, I will stress also Belarus, also putting more uh, economic help to Ukraine, assisting refugees, that's the right strategy. If we would, for instance, currently force kind of ceasefire, now sign some kind of agreement, I don't believe that would be bringing long-lasting peace, because what would happen? Russia would regroup, Russia would be able to restore some of its military might, also to get a bit kind of boost to economy, and then Russia is going to restart, because the main aim of the Russian leadership is actually destroying Ukrainian state. While this aim is not accomplished, they will not rest. Now recently your country, your government has been calling for an EU-wide ban on visas for Russian tourists coming into Europe. So they're coming in through your uh, land border, I understand, and then flying on to other European destinations. And you've called for this, and also the Ukrainian president has called for it. But what do you hope to achieve by this? Because this would maybe uh, affect, I suppose, the middle classes from Russia, the sort of fairly well-off people who can afford to go on foreign holidays. But you wouldn't really be affecting the, the elites or the very rich, I suppose, who are more responsible, you, you could argue, for this conflict, what is going on now. Precisely. You uh, clearly described the goal. Yes, this is not Putin's war. Like it or not, this is Russia's war. If we look at uh, different kind of opinion polls, that war has been supported by majority of Russians. We can argue 55 or, or 80. That's an open issue, but I think that majority is there. Second, 
Indeed, uh, most of those oligarchs have been sanctioned already by the European Union or the United States. But you know, any authoritarian regimes, and uh, I do believe that applies also to uh, the Kremlin, uh, they are very sensitive when they feel that uh, those people who live in the capital or big cities start to feel the war. And the aim really is to affect those Russians who probably don't think about war, that they think that this is something that some other guy is doing, it does not relate to me. They need to feel at least some discomfort, not being able to go to drink coffee to Paris or, or to have some uh, nice uh, concert or opera in Italy. That is exactly what we believe is needed so that this understanding that you pay the price for supporting or not objecting to the aggression is the right one. So I don't have much of sympathy uh, to tourists that are trying to come to the European Union, especially if I compare to all those sufferings that Ukrainian people, Ukrainian children feel each and every day. How optimistic are you that the, this can be brought about though? Because from what I understand, uh, there's going to be a foreign minister's meeting at the end of this month in the EU when this is going to be discussed. But there seems to be a limited amount of support at the moment just from mainly, I think, Baltic states, Finland and the Czech Republic. Uh, and also the, the EU Commission has said that it's not possible to do a blanket ban throughout the EU. It's up to the individual states to take this action. So how optimistic are you about this? You know, I have quite an experience how the European Union works. Uh, you propose something and it takes a couple of weeks or months of kind of discussion and then you have member states saying, no, it's not something that we want to do. Some others are calling for that. I can, for instance, uh, look at some of the sanctions that we have adopted. Yes, at some point, uh, some of those ideas were not met with cheers and we were not able to decide uh, in one or two months. But the good thing is that debate has started. And I think that the more we discuss, the more member states will come to understanding that this is something that they should understand. Second, yes, indeed, already uh, many countries, including Latvia, have introduced uh, tourist visa ban. We are also now working with some of like-minded nations about how to close the land border. <laughs> Let's not forget Latvian-Russian border, Estonian-Russian border, Finnish-Russian border are those where Russians can directly cross into the European Union. Uh, airlines are not anymore flying from Moscow or other uh, cities to European cities. And we see that uh, this is not only political and moral message, but also the security message. Uh, we see that uh, there are increasing numbers of, of Russians trying to cross. Not all of them are uh, seeking political asylum. That's a completely different procedure. But uh, many of them simply come to, to our countries and sometimes they start fighting with Ukrainians. They are starting to uh, to put out slogans uh, supporting Russia, and that is completely unacceptable. If you want to support Russia, stay home, go to the front line, but don't do that in a European country, especially if your government now considers the whole of Europe as fascists, Nazis and everything else. Recently, your parliament as well has, I think, voted to designate Russia as a state sponsor of terrorism. So, but can you explain to me what the parliament would hope to achieve by doing that? What effect would it have on the, the conflict? Well, first of all, this was a very clear political and moral support to Ukraine because we believe that uh, some of the actions of the Russian military, and you know there were some horrific videos circulating social media about atrocities committed of Russians against uh, Ukrainian prisoners of war. I'm not talking about all those shellings of uh, kindergartens, theaters, uh, then trying to cover up this uh, war crime, then uh, having the uh, grain deal signed recently here in Turkey and the next day when the deal was, was signed, uh, the shelling of the Odessa support happened. So all those kind of elements coming into place 
led to a very strong uh, support in the parliament to adopt this declaration. Uh, from legal point of view, uh, unlike in the United States, there is not much of kind of action uh, apart from the political and moral statement, but uh, we also believe that uh, this gives us uh, more uh, political and moral clout to demand sealing the border for Russians traveling to EU, but also finally deciding on how to size the uh, Russian government assets and to help Ukraine to rebuild. So it's also about the fact that uh, if we consider Russia as uh, terrorist uh, sponsor state, also all those uh, sanctioned assets could be used to, to help Ukraine. Because it's not the West or Ukrainians that should cover the damage that is made by, by the Kremlin and by the Russian Federation. In the resolution that was passed by your parliament, it also called on other like-minded countries to do the same in this designation. But I'm interested to hear what you think about the, for instance, you know, would you urge the United States to do that? Because there have been some comments from the Russian government recently that if they did that, that would be, the relations would be past the point of uh, no return. I mean, I suppose there's a difference between a country of Latvia's size doing that and a country the size of the United States doing it. What, what do you think about that? Well, we consider the United States as a uh, very much like-minded like nation. So the appeal also goes to the United States. But you know, with Russians, the interesting thing is that they are also um, making a lot of noise, threatening a lot. Uh, but our experience with the Russian Federation is, if you are firm, if you really uh, show the strengths, then um, they stop and, and backtrack. If you start negotiating, if you start kind of trying to, uh, to appear uh, or, or they think that you are manifesting some kind of weakness, then uh, in that case they are pushing uh, forward. So from that point of view, uh, the parliament, when uh, they passed this declaration, they appealed to all like-minded nations. At the same time, the decision is for those nations to make. Foreign Minister, thank you very much. Thank you very much.